He certainly is worthy, amen? We're going to make our confession and then we'll be seated. Welcome all of you that are new with us today. We believe in speaking what we believe because when we hear it, it makes it more secure in our hearts. And sometimes, you know, we can think about things, but when we say it, we hear it. And uh, a lot of people are living by what they hear today. We need to be living by the word of God that we hear from our own mouth. Amen. Let's say this together. I am here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open. My mind is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life. Because Jesus lives in me. Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you're here today. Yes, and have a seat. It's a great day to be in the house of God. Um, I just love Jesus. He is so good, and he cares so much about each one of us. And he knows about each one of us today. And if you're here today, and uh, it's the first time you've come here, We've been, um, just for the last couple of weeks, we shared on he's more than enough. Everything that we have need of, he has provided. That we have more than enough for every good work. And then uh, just last week, I shared a message on rags to riches. And uh, it was say yes to the dress. And it was about righteousness. That God has made us the righteousness in Christ Jesus. He's already taken care of it. And that doesn't mean we do everything right. But it does mean that we have right standing with God. And that's a good thing to know because there's so many people today running away from the Lord instead of running to him. Even in the worst of situations, we have an, we have an advocate with the Father. And that's Jesus. And he loves us. So today we're going to just finish this. It's just a short two-part series on rags to riches. And I want to talk to you about the promise of prosperity. Uh, I've been fighting uh, the fight of faith this week, and I am an overcomer. Amen. Can you give the worship team a big hand today? <laughs> they do such an amazing job of taking us right into the presence of God. And uh, it's important because when you're in God's presence, he can take care of a lot of things that, you know, we don't even know about, maybe even till later on. But uh, we spend a lot of time in this church worshiping because we know where our help is. And so today, we're going to continue with the promise of prosperity. I've, I felt this because when Jesus went to the cross, certainly, you know, we inherited eternal life. That's what the Word of God says. That forever we can live in the kingdom of God in heaven when we leave this earth. And that's going to be a lot longer than the time frame that we live in this earth. So it's very important that people make that decision. And most people, uh, at least I've experienced over the years in ministry, uh, I find that they don't even know they have a need for God. They think they're doing okay by themselves. It's when they get in trouble that they're starting to look for somebody. But the truth is we need the Lord whether we're in trouble or whether everything's going okay. We need the Lord every single day. And so um, beyond just eternal life, which that is more than enough. Uh, Jesus said that we would have life and life more abundantly right here in the earth. And for so many years, I was raised in the church. Uh, I was raised in, in a traditional church. And I loved, I loved God. And I knew who Jesus was. But when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, when I made that confession with my mouth that Jesus you are my Lord. You are my Savior. Forgive my sins. When it became a personal relationship, my heart and my mind began to be renewed to the truth that God is a blesser. God loves us. He cares about us. And, you know, I always thought God did everything, the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, it was if this bad thing happened, well, you know, we just don't know what God's going to do. I didn't know that was a lie. The Word of God tells you what God's going to do. If you know the Word of God, you know the truth. And there were things that I just never in my life applied myself to to learn. But once I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, my heart began to yearn to know more about what I had received. And the Word became like food to me, just like it says it is. 
And so over the years, um, I love the word of God. And the word of God, if it's hidden in our heart, the Bible says we won't sin against God. It's in, it's in Psalm uh, 119 that if we hide the word of God in our heart, we will not sin against God. But if we don't have the word of God in our heart, we to often lean, lean to our own understanding, to what we feel about something. And uh, over the years, this word prosperity, when I was young, I thought the church people, you know, they were just kind of poor people. They didn't have a lot, you know, uh, just barely getting by group. But I found out as I grew and was placed in places where people talked about faith, and believing God and standing and believing and seeing a God bless us just like the promise is of the covenant that he will bless you to be a blessing. Uh, my heart began to get excited that there's more. Everybody say there's more. There's more. And the key to it, I believe, is in Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which we talked about last week, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, if you go up above that in that scripture, um, it talks about not worrying about what you're going to have. And specifically, it talks about what you'll eat, what you'll drink, or what you'll wear. Um, we think about the things that are in the natural. But if you know about the kingdom of God, you will know that all those things have already been supplied. And that's why it says, seek first the kingdom of God. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is 3 John 2. And we're going to look at that in the King James Version. Because when I was first studying the word, this is the version of the Bible that I looked at. And it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, there's a part of that that where it says, as your soul prospers, if your soul doesn't prosper, then all those other things are not going to prosper. And the way your soul prospers is by the word of God. It's by hearing the word of God because it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if we're going to become people who are prosperous, we have to know the truth of the word of God. We have to know when Jesus left this earth, the kingdom of God was established in those who believe. Everybody say this. The kingdom of God has been established in my life. If you know Jesus, you are now in the kingdom of God. The Bible says that uh, you're a citizen of heaven. Everybody, a citizen, everybody say, I'm a citizen of heaven. Now, the good news of that is, no matter what's going on in the world, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Amen? Amen? Jesus said in John 17, Father, I'm going to leave the world, but these that I have had with me in the world, they will stay in the world. So they're not of the world, just like I'm not of the world. And his prayer was that the Father would keep them in the world. And I believe today there's so many Christians that if all the Christians that we have seen in the years of our ministry showed up at church, they'd have to go somewhere else because there wouldn't be room enough to contain them in this one. They would be filling up every church in this city. And what's happened is the world has taken people's focus because if you don't have what you need in the world to eat, to drink, to wear, you begin to... to Try to go after it the way the world does. But if you know the kingdom of God, everybody say, know the kingdom of God. If you seek the kingdom of God first, then you will begin to do the things that God asks you to do that will always bring more than enough provision for every need that we have. He says, beloved, this is actually John speaking, but he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I heard this as I was working on this message this week, and it just came in my heart. Uh, God wants us healthy, wealthy, and wise. Everybody say, God wants me healthy, wealthy, and wise. And, you know, in the church, uh, when we were first moved, moved out to Tulsa, we began to hear a new word about 
uh, wealth. And it wasn't just about money. It was about joy and peace and hope and all these wonderful things that we have because of Jesus. And it, it did include finances, but we learned by being out in that church that we needed finances because we were sending missionaries all over the world and supporting people and doing things to get people saved. And that took us being prosperous in that church. And so as I watched how God in that church in Tulsa provided enough money to build everything there debt-free, everything, buildings, everything we did, there was no debt ever. In fact, it was such a marvelous miracle in the city that everybody in the banking business wanted to loan us money because they knew that we were prospering. Everybody say prospering. And, and so we were there through a miracle season and, and people began to speak about prosperity. And then there were those, you know, I would come back to visit here and other places who would say, oh, that message of prosperity is straight from hell. You know, that's the devil. And, and I thought, where, where, where in the Bible does it say we won't prosper? The covenant with Adam or with Abraham was, you will be blessed to be a blessing. And it says, even your enemies will be cursed to you for so you'll have a blessing. In other words, you are blessed, blessed, and blessed. You are blessed coming in and you are blessed going out. Amen? Amen. And in the day we've been living in, especially the last few years, if, if people are looking at their circumstances, this is just the beginning. If the Bible is true, the world gets darker and darker and darker. But it says in Isaiah 60 that the, wor the church world gets brighter and brighter and brighter. We become the light in the dark. But we have to prosper. Everybody say prosper. And when you seek the kingdom of God, you begin to prosper. Not, not in something visible only, but in your heart and in your mind. Because the spirit of God stirs up on the inside of you this expectation that there's something more. Everybody say there's something more. Excuse me. I believe that the kingdom of God, it, the Bible says, and this is Psalm 35, 27. It says, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Everybody say, God has pleasure when I prosper. This is a part of Calvary. This is a part of why Jesus went to Calvary. He said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. And an abundant life is a prosperous life, is a prosperous life. And when our mentality gets in agreement with our heart, you know, it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, we're to renew our mind to the truth of the word of God. That's seeking the kingdom of God. And when we begin to do that, then we begin to believe that God is able. And he's not only able, he's willing and he's ready to do what he wants to do. This whole thing that we've done here in this church happened during COVID when people were losing jobs, when things were not looking right in the world. But God is not moved by the world system. God has all the cattle on a thousand hills. He has everything that he needs to prosper his people. And so when it says, seek ye the kingdom of God first, what it's saying is, know what you have. Everybody say, I need to know what I have. And when you know what you have, you begin to be able to take authority over what you don't have. And you begin to take authority over what you don't see in other people's lives that they need. Because you believe in the kingdom of God. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says about the church, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you, I think, uh, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Everybody say, I look different than the, than the world. Yes, you do. Because in the spirit, we can't see, you know, what is seen in the spirit realm. But we are the light. And if a person does not know Jesus, there is darkness over their life. That's why in this church, we are believing for a move of God for souls for people to be saved, for people to come into this church who need Jesus, and that the word of God will bring life to them, and their life will change. 
from poverty mentality to a blessing mentality. Just like Pastor Dan was saying, you know, Joshua, uh, the Lord told Joshua in the old covenant that, that he was to prosper everywhere that he went, but he had to meditate the word day and night. Then he would be prosperous and he would make his way successful. You know, I think a lot of times we're looking for success in what we can do. And God is saying, do what I want you to do and you will be very successful. Renew your mind to the word of God and be who you're called to be and you will be successful. Um, in Romans 8, I want to look at Romans 8 today because you are a son and daughter of God. Now, you know, in my family, um, you know, that, that makes you uh, have an inheritance of whatever that person has. You know, this is a small thing, but my grandson came to mow grass yesterday, and uh, he's, he's the sweetest guy. His name's Jack. And uh, he mowed half the yard, and then he had to get a haircut. So then he had to go take a shower, then he had to go get his hair cut, then he had to come back and start over again. And by the end, you know, he had, he'd been there practically four or five hours in the whole total thing. And when he got ready to go, he loves black raspberry ice cream from uh, this place up in Monticello. It's called the Sycamore. We had that back in Logansport where I grew up, and then they put one over there. And so when I was up there, I got a lot of that for, for our uh, Easter dinner. And we didn't eat a lot of it. And so I had a quart or a pint of that, and I knew I did out in the freezer. And so we paid him for doing the lawn. I said, hey, Jack, I got something special for you today. He goes, what? I said, black raspberry. He goes, oh, Grandma. <laughs> oh. And so we went out there, and I said, well, look, I have another one. Give this one to Molly. And because she likes black raspberry, my other granddaughter. I said, well, here I have a quart of chocolate. Take this home for the rest of the family. I mean, he goes out to the car. He said, I got to get right home before this melts. <laughs> Well, then I got a call from my daughter, and she said, Jack says all of this belongs to him. <laughs> Jack's blessed, blessed, and blessed. You know, but, but it didn't all belong to him. I said, well, let me give you the right way this goes. And I could hear him in the background laughing. But, you know, that's the way you are about your family. You know, I mean, I remember my mother, when we would go to her house, we had to leave with something. I mean, and my grandmother was the same way. I mean, you went out the door with something in a container to eat, usually, because she cooked a lot, my grandma. And so the Father in heaven, he is like that with us. He wants us to be blessed, and he blesses us to be a blessing. But if we're looking at our blessing from the Lord based on our performance, based on how good we did today, we're never going to see that happen. Because God's a blesser because he loves us. And when he loves you, he's going to make a way for you, if, even if there isn't a way. Just like with Jack yesterday, when he got done mowing, you know, I just, you know, God knows what's going to bless somebody. And if you could have seen his eyes over a little pint of black raspberry, I, you thought I gave him a million dollars. He'd probably like that better, but, you know, <laughs> but he was blessed by what, what happened in that situation. Well, when you're a son and a daughter, you have an expectation that in that family setting that there's a blessing there. Do you know the devil's greatest work, I believe, right now is to divide families? I've seen it. I've experienced it. And he is out to destroy families. Why? You know, we're looking at government, which we are going to pray this week. It's the National Day of Prayer. And there's a prayer meeting at, uh, I think, Columbian Park, Sue said, from 530 to 7, if anybody would want to go there. We will pray here on Thursday at noon, right here, if you want to come and pray with us. Uh, it, it's important that we pray for our nation. But I believe God started with a family, and a nation will go the way the family goes. Can I say that again? If the family isn't going well, I do not believe the nation can go well. And so there's a, a huge uh, separation that the enemy has brought in families to keep young people out of church. I said to Pastor Dan, we were doing our youth services on Wednesday night. And, but on Sunday, there's, there's many more youth in here than on Wednesday night because the world has so many activities for young people today that they're busy and they can't get here. So I said to him, 
well, maybe we just need to get young people used to going to church again on Sunday. Because church is a time where you just take this little bit of time and give it to the Lord. I was raised where I went to church and I, you know, I, I was playing with the bulletin. You know, I really wasn't paying that much attention. But the word of God was going in. And so I believe it's a critical time for families to get back into what God has planned. And so we are standing for families in this church. Some of the songs we sing are about family. We sang one today. I speak you know, Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over my family. We sing another one that has those same kind of words in it. But this is what it says. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. And that is the truth. If you live according to circumstances and situations, you will die. Not physically, but you will give up. You will give up hope. You will let go. You will base your whole future on what you see today. Because the flesh, for some reason, our flesh likes to be negative. How many of you know that's true? My husband used to say, any conversation you get in, you know, it starts here, and it generally starts sliding right down, down, you know. Well, you know, I, I wasn't feeling well this week. Well, I felt worse. You know, I, I had, well, you know, I know somebody, they died of just exactly what you're talking about. And the whole thing goes just into the toilet. Well, it's, it, you notice today, in today's world, there's a lot of things we could talk about that are negative. But there's a lot of good things we can talk about that are positive about what God is doing in our lives and around the world. And it goes on and it says, but if by the Spirit, now if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the, of the body. I mean, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now let me read that again totally. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, then you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Everybody say heirs. But you need to know what your inheritance is. And you find that out by the word of God. And then it says heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Do you think Jesus is poor? Do you think Jesus has lack of anything? He, when he intercedes and prays for us, do you think it's about lack? No, I think it's about blessing. I think it's about healing. I think it's about joy and peace and all those things that are included in this covenant. And it says, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. In this world, Jesus said in, in John, uh, like the 16th verse chapter, toward the end of that verse, he said, in this world you will have tribulation. But then he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Well, then you are an overcomer because you are a joint heir with Jesus. Does that make sense? It says in 1 John chapter 4 that as he is, so are we in this world. In this world. So as he is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, that's why it says in Ephesians that you're seated right next to him in heaven because he wants you to see things the way he sees them. And that's exactly where I think we are to see prosperity. He does not see lack for you. The word of God does not say anywhere that you will lack. It says you will lack no good thing is what it says. Now, there are things that we have to do to stay in the spirit. Everybody say in the spirit. How many of you know there are days it's a little difficult to stay in the spirit? But where our blessing is and where this prosperity is, is in the spirit. So if somebody comes against us, if somebody does something to us, our only, the only thing we can do, our only response can be, I love you and I forgive you. Why? Because I walk in prosperity. And what you do to me cannot affect what happens to me. Are you getting this today? When you think the kingdom of God, when you think prosperity, you have an inheritance 
it says. And um, I want to read to you in Ephesians. Now, Ephesians, I do love that book. And uh, that's where I just quoted from where it says you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's in chapter 2 of Ephesians. But I want to read to you from chapter 1. Um, this is so, now you'll get excited. You're probably going to want to sh- jump and shout by the end. Are you ready? It's true. And when you have a bad day, read this to yourself because this is about you. This new covenant is about you. And it's about your prosperity. Blessed be the God of our Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him from the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has accept, we, He made us accepted in the beloved. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if you read this to yourself every day, you will, you will have a different idea of what your day is going to be. If this is your first thing you look at, instead of your phone, which I am guilty of, so I'm not throwing stones. In him, we have redemption through his blood. And we have the forgiveness of sins. Everybody say, this is our inheritance. This is what we've inherited. According to the riches of his grace, not our ability. It doesn't say not our ability, but that's what that is. His grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. In him, in him also we have obtained an inheritance. Everybody say, I have an inheritance. To get an inheritance, somebody has to die. That's what happened on Calvary. Somebody died for you and me. And when Jesus died, his perfect blood opened the door of heaven wide open for us to live in his presence every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every day who lives in us. And by the Holy Spirit of God, led by the Spirit of God, the sons of God, led by the Spirit of God, will prosper. It goes on and says, uh, in him also we have attained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, Jesus, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen? Isn't that exciting? He, the Holy Spirit is the promise. He is the guarantee, not you, not me, not what I can do, not what you can do, but what God did through Jesus Christ. We have this inheritance. Everybody say, I'm rich. rich. You are rich. You are rich. You are rich in health. You are rich in wealth. And you are rich in wisdom. Everybody say, wisdom. Wisdom. You know, I love the word of God so much because when you read it and you begin to speak it, it begins to stir your spirit up. You know, your spirit is alive if you know Jesus. But just like us, you know, I'm alive every day walking around and sometimes I have no clue what's going on. Uh, Have any of you ever been like that? I mean, you know, we're just going through the motions. Uh, But when you are quickened by the Holy Spirit, that's what it says in Romans 8. The Holy Spirit of God will quicken your mortal body. It will bring you to attention that somebody needs a word, somebody needs this. Just like Pastor Dan was saying, that we give and as we give. You know, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he said to them, go and declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen? That's, that's who we are. Well, we're going to have to prosper to be able to give. I have no greater joy than when I'm somewhere and the Lord says to me, give, give this person something. 
you know, and I, you know, I have that little restaurant ministry I've got going. And uh, I just because I like to go out to eat, I guess. But I, I have a ministry going there. And, uh, and so they all come to wait on me now. You know, if they know my girl isn't there that day, I'll, I'll take her, you know. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes at, at Christmas time, this one guy that he just waits on me every now and then, and he's, he's a nice person. I, and, but I always tell him, you know, the Lord wants you to be blessed today. And so uh, he came to finish, and I felt the Lord, my husband and I at Christmas, we were blessed. And so my husband said, we're going to split up some $50 bills, and everywhere we go, if somebody, God tells us, give it to them, give it to them. And so he was one of the people God told me to give it to. And so I gave it to him, and he took off, and then he comes back. <laughs> he said, did you mean to give me this? I said, yes, the Lord wants you to have that. Well, you know, now when I go in, if it's Tuesday <laughs> and he's on duty, he is up there to the front. Here you go. Here you. And he makes me a little rose out of the napkin. I mean, this, you know, because why? Because when you give and you prosper, I couldn't do that if I didn't prosper. I wouldn't have had, I listened 20 years ago, I didn't have, uh, maybe 50 cents would have been the tip. But when you get a revelation of God wants you prosperous, because there's people on the other side of your prosperity. And when the devil tries to steal, you let him know you're not taking. This is what I have belongs to God. And if you're going to steal from me, you have just stolen from God. And that's the truth. Everything I have, not my 10% tithe. I'm not talking, I mean, that obviously goes to God. But every other thing I have belongs to God. And when I leave here, all of that will go to, to our children. If I haven't spent it all, sorry, Lori. <laughs> if, I have, if we haven't given it all away. But if we gave it away, you can have the, the harvest. But I'm just saying, when you... Think about prosperity. Think about who you are. If you know Jesus, I just read to you from Ephesians chapter 1, who you are. You have an inheritance, and that thing is sealed by the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, at Victory in Tulsa, we would call in the finances on Monday to do what we needed to do. We would stand up, and we would pray, and we'd call the money from the north, south, east, and west. Why? Because we were building something to help people receive Jesus. And we would not do it ashamed. We believed that that was what God wanted because God had things he wanted to do. We called in health and wholeness. We prayed over the sick every service. Every service was about people becoming all that God called them to be. And that's prosperous people. Prosperity in people's lives. Um, it says in Matthew 6, 33, this is the scripture. And I'm just going to share this one more time with you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That part of that scripture is saying, know who you are because of Jesus who died on Calvary for you. Know who you are in this world. Know who you are supposed to be. Know who God has made you be. And then all these things will be added to you. I close with this today um, in 1979 when I was in Tulsa alone with my three kids. That scripture, the beginning of that scripture, Matthew 6, 25, God began to speak to me, take no thought for your life. That was the King James Version in verse 25. Well, I thought about my life all the time because I had three kids. I lived alone. I knew one other couple in the entire city of Tulsa. I worked at Old Roberts University, and I loved being there. God told me when I was working there, I live here. <laughs> I'm with you. And he did. He was allowed to be there. The Holy Spirit was allowed to move there. And uh, so in that year, God healed my life. But I was a worrier. I was always fearful of what was going to happen to me, that I never had enough. And I had three kids. And what was I going to do? And how was I going to live? How was I going to make it? And God gave me this scripture. I had no teacher. I didn't have a Bible teacher. I was by myself. I was born again, and I prayed in the Holy Ghost. I did know to do that. But my life had been a shambles through divorce and situations. And I was so inexperienced that the word of God 
became my counselor, became my everything. And I read that scripture, and the Lord began to speak to me, I will take care of you. You do what I tell you, and I will take care of you. And I watched him take care of us. I know food was put on my porch for us to eat. I watched him be who he said he was. God is a God of abundance. Now then, that was abundance to me. You say, just the bag of food on your porch? Yes, that was abundance. Because when you have nothing, a little bit can be an abundance right at that moment. Don't question what abundance in your mind means. The abundance of this word will bring you abundance in your life. Amen. Let's stand up together today. Father, I thank you today for your word. John's going to come and play. Certainly God ministered to everybody today at the beginning of the service, but I, I do want to pray for you today. If you know you've had a mentality of poverty, and this is in regard to anything, you know, I probably will never get a house. I, pr I probably will uh, never, ne uh, my marriage probably will never be good. Or maybe if you're divorced, I'll, I probably never get married again. I, I probably, if I look at where I am today, I mean, there's just no way I could. And, and that's, that's the mentality. And I want to pray for you today if that's where you've lived. And I'm going to call you out of that place today because you do not belong there. God did not put you in that place. He didn't put you in a place of lack. He didn't put you in a place of not having enough. He didn't put you in a place of seeing, I'll never, I'll never, I will never get to be what I thought I was supposed to be. He didn't put you in that place. He wants you to know today you can be whoever he said you could be. And for everyday living, it's right here. What I read from today is called the Beatitudes. I've been in Israel. I've sat where that was. And I've, it, it, it's like there's always a presence when you're in Israel in places where you go where Jesus, the, it, the Bible talks about Jesus. I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit in us. But when I sat there, I thought he gave them that, that three chapters, five, six, and seven of Matthew as to how to live life, how to live life, how to live on the earth. And today I'm telling you, you do not believe, you do not, do not belong in a place of poverty mindedness you have to change so father i pray today over every person here let's bow our heads and if that's you and you say um i probably lived there in in my life and uh, i want out of this place i want you to lift your hand because god is going to pull you out today he is going to lift you out of that place when he gives the word he performs the word he demonstrates the word and i pray that over your life today if you've been in that situation where you've just been living with that kind of a mindset. Yes, I see your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I break that lie, that curse off of their mind in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, you said you would give us more than enough for every good work, that Jesus went to Calvary, that we would have life and life more abundantly. I thank you for a hunger for the word of God to rise up in their heart because it is the word of God. It is the truth of the word of God stirring on the inside of them that will pull them out of that place. So I pray for a hunger for the word of God today to see more, to see more, to see more. And that by searching the scriptures, by putting their focus on you, they will begin to get out of that place of poverty mindedness. I bind it over every life in this church, over anyone watching. God has a promise of prosperity for you. You are no longer in rags. You are in riches because faithful is he who called you and he will do it. He will do it. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And there is more than enough for every single one of you, every single one of you watching for the body of Christ. Father, I thank you today that we begin to, to see things the way you see them. We are living in a world that needs to see Jesus, that needs to see abundance of your power, your anointing, the peace of God. People need to see you, Lord. They need to see your peace. They need to see joy. They need to see hope for their future. And I thank you, Lord, that in the church, not just this church, but any church that believes that Jesus came to give them life and life more abundantly, that the word of God will begin to go forth in a positive way about who you are and what you have done for us. 
in Jesus' name. Well, we're blessed in this church that you were here today. God loves you, has a big plan for you this week. Keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, because you just don't know who's going to come by your door, come by your house, come by your workplace, and they're going to need that word that you've got in your spirit to give to them. Amen. Let's finish with our confession. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I am steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that my labor is not in vain. Amen. Don't be blessed. Have a great week.